Hi there, I'm Mike Ellingberg. I'm here with my friend Anthony Lowe, the physio detective. And after our discussion a week or two ago about uh, grip strength and kind of some impromptu easy ways to start building it, we decided we'd go more depth, in, you know, go more in depth into this topic because it's not one that a lot of people spend a lot of time on. And realistically, grip strength is one of the most functional things you can do. Whoever you are, every day you're going to use it, whether it's opening a jar or um, moving around your lawnmower, picking up your kids, carrying your groceries from the car to the house, or if you're a lifter, whether you're trying to hang on to that bar long or trying to get the weight up high, uh, grip strength's often our weakest point. So it's one of the things we should train more. Now over the upcoming weeks, we're going to talk about the various types of grip strength, the things that contribute to them, and the ways they can be trained. So if you start researching this, everybody will agree on two primary types of grip strength. There's what's commonly referred to as your crush grip strength, which is most commonly trained with you know, your standard gripper. And these come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, and it's all about just crushing. Then there's what's often called your pinch grip strength. I think of that as your open grip strength, just like I think of this as your closed grip strength. But your pinch grip is the more open hand, and it's a pinch or a pinch and it has to do with that pinching motion. You don't, you see that trained a lot less often. When you do, often it's people doing things with grippers, training that way, whether it be single digit or for the entire hand. But this is, in my opinion, one of the more functional types of grip strength because you see this in everything you do. Now, also contributing to grip strength and kind of overall hand and wrist health are questions of your grip endurance. So how long can you hold that grip for? This gets into, can you get that next rep out if you were doing pull-ups or chin-ups or muscle-ups? Well, maybe your body can, but if your hands are coming off the bar, the answer is no. Um, can you get the groceries all the way from the car to the house? Well, most of the time, the point of failure for people is their hands. So your endurance in your grip is a big deal. And then contributing behind all that is some discussion about not just the muscle development and training that, but the difference between that and your tendon development. Uh, when it comes to your hands, your tendons are a very big driver. The muscles mostly exist back here in your arm. So getting that force to your hands to do anything has to do a whole lot with the tendon health and your wrist health and strength. So we'll also have a little bit of discussion about ways that people commonly train their wrist. We've all seen this one. We've all seen people doing these, training their wrist, but ways that you can train your wrist both with the standard ways and with maybe some not so standard ways where you don't necessarily require so much equipment. And then we'll talk about common equipment and how, with whatever other training you're doing, how that feeds into your grip strength, your wrist strength, your hand strength, etc. And we'll go into more depth in all of this over the next couple of weeks. I look forward to seeing you all then. Please have a good day.